Hi everyone, this is Karen Hightower, design team member over at Stamp TV for Gina K Designs. Today I want to share this little fall card project with you and show you how I created the three different colors on the greeting. So I will show you everything I used and then also I will be putting the measurements of all the different layers underneath the video so you'll have them so you don't have to try to write them down or anything okay we also have the inside done as well as the back and I'll show you how to do all that so let's get started and I'll show you what I use I have the new stamp TV kit stamp set painted autumn by Gina K designs today I'll be using the full leaf as well as this greeting there's always something to be thankful for then I have my cardstock, I have ivory, heavy base weight, cut it four and a quarter by 11, scored it five and a half. And then all the layers, I have a dark chocolate and an ivory for the inside, along with a piece of prickly pear scrap. But all these are cut at five and one eighth long, just different widths. This is for the front, uh, that's the dark chocolate. Then I have an ivory layering weight fresh asparagus tomato soup and then I have the little ivory and dark chocolate for the greeting the inks I have the premium dye inks by Gina K designs I have tomato soup faded brick I have the prickly pear and the honey mustard I'll also be using the fresh asparagus and the jelly bean green then I will be using let's see the 3m foam squares I have this piece of plastic, I believe it's used for cross stitching, but I'll be using it to line up and poke these holes. And I have the Gina K Designs Dark Chocolate Gingham Ribbon, I love gingham ribbon. I have the Craft Pick, it's a tonic craft pick. You can use any craft pick, maybe even a safety pin or a sewing needle, anything to poke your holes with. I also have the Copic W3 and the Spectrum Noir BG3, which is a brown gray. Um, I'll probably use the Copic today, but either one of them will work. I have the acrylic blocks that my stamps are already mounted on. Let's get started. I'll show you how to do this. We'll do Versamark first. Let's start with the full leaf small image here. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of the tomato soup showing. So I'm going to concentrate on mostly stamping along that edge. I always like to get a few little tips of the leaf in there just in case. So then we'll move that one aside, let it dry, and then we'll do the strip for the inside, the prickly pear. That one's done. We'll move it aside as well. So we're going to stamp on the inside layer and the outside layer and we'll get the leaves put on there real quick so I'm gonna start with the jelly bean green the prickly pear and the tomato soup again I'm using the full image this is the jelly bean green and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the inside and we'll do one up here And then onto the main image here. Now when I stamp these leaves on here, I'm going to try to get more of the prickly pear and the tomato soup up against the edge because I have the fresh asparagus cardstock that's going to be up against that edge. We'll clean my stamp off and then we will do prickly pear. I really like to decorate the insides of the cards. I figure if you're doing the outside and doing all that beautiful work and creative stuff on the outside, you might as well decorate the inside and get it just as pretty and fancy as the outside. I'm going to clean my stamp again and I'm going with the tomato soup. It's one of my favorite fall colors. So now that that's done, we will do the veining part real quick. 
once you have all your layers cut and stuff this really doesn't take long at all to do we'll start with the fresh asparagus over the jelly bean green you can stamp it crooked like that it looks good or you can line it up how you want so that's that's up to you I kind of like it offset some so if it offsets I'm okay if I get it straight hey it's a bonus right okay this is the faded brick and one more the honey mustard over the prickly pear and you can use whatever color combinations you want these are just good fall colors to me. The leaves are green and then they change into the beautiful reds and stuff. Well, that is if you live up north or in good areas for that. We don't get much of it around here. Our leaves go from green to brown and then they fall off. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere the inside panel to the dark chocolate. And then I'm gonna cut this one down real quick. Let's see, yeah, there we go. All right, so what I'm going to do, okay, there's our inside panel, it's ready to go. We'll mount it in a moment. Then let's take our fresh asparagus and our tomato soup and get that mounted. Also, if you are doing this and do like I just did, it's a little longer. You can go back and trim that off. All right, I'm gonna take my cutter. Cause if you see, you can see just a little of the green and orange back there, our tomato soup and fresh asparagus. So I'm gonna cut that off. So it's nice and even. And then we'll mount this one. So now we will add this to the card base and then we will do the greeting. Oh, you know what? You can't add this to the card base yet. I've still got stuff to do to it. What am I thinking? Let's do the ribbon real quick. I can do the shadows once it's on there. Let's do the ribbon. And I like to take and put a little tape on the ribbon ends. Now let's take our W3 warm gray and I'm just going to add my shadows. Remember wherever your light source is coming from like I'm thinking in my head the light source is coming from above so I do underneath my images. Let's add this to the inside before we get on to the greeting. Okay. Then we will pull out the fresh asparagus, the tomato soup, and the prickly pear. We're gonna set this aside. Let me go ahead and cut my ribbon though. We'll put that on in a moment. We'll set that aside. Let's do the greeting. This is really easy to do. All you do is take your greeting, and I'm going to start at the bottom here on the Grateful Four, and I'm going to use the tomato soup. I'm going to ink it up real good. Now, if you get on the words above it, it's okay because it'll just blend in together. You can see how I did on that one as well. 
then I'll take the prickly pear. And it's easier if I hold it. Uh, you may can do it another way, but if you can look at it and see, you can see where the ink is. So if you hold it, you can kind of see, especially with the second color, where you're putting it, okay? Now also, if you touch on the tomato soup color, and you don't want to contaminate your ink pad, so I just take and wipe off a little bit. Make sure I'm not keeping any of the tomato soup on that prickly pear pad. And then the fresh asparagus on top. Excess of there too. Okay, then we're gonna huff on it, which is to blow warm, moist air to reactivate the ink in case any of it's dried. And then I'm going to put this down and I'm gonna give it just a minute to absorb all those colors off of the stamp. There we go. You can see where I didn't get enough color on there. We'll start again with the tomato soup. There, much better coverage. Okay, and that's on the back side. You can see I didn't. And when you mount it on the dark chocolate, you're not going to see that anyway. We're going to add the ribbon now. Before I got the craft pick, I had a large safety pin that I would use to poke my holes. And I finally got the craft pick, which works wonderful. And this little plastic, I think it's for cross stitching. You can pick up a sheet of it and then cut it down to a size that's manageable for you. So now all we have to do is mount this and then we will finish the back of the card. Add this on here. And look, you have a cute little fall card. Clean them up and scoot it over. I think this one's still too long, a little more off. All right, so then let's open it up. I have this stamp called Made With Love by, it's in the stamp set Made With Love. It used to be in a kit. The stamp set is now sold separate over at Gina K Designs. I'm going to stamp the leaf here, and then I want to do one here. I always like to do different things. And there is the finished card project for today. Also, if you didn't want to poke these little holes, you can add some rhinestones on there or pearls or whatever you know you want to bling it up with. So that's the finished card project. We have the inside done as well as the back. Come on over to Stamp TV and join us for the challenges and the Stamp TV Kit Addicts group where we have weekly tutorials and we have a monthly challenge over there as well. Thank you again for joining me and please subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.